Alright, first and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the Most High God in the name, and in the name of His only begotten Son. Alright, we're the Hebrew Israelites of the sect of the Sakari. We come out here week in and week out to let the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans know that they are the true Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's right. Okay? We come out here to expose the so called white man and his biblical identity, which he tries so desperately to hide from as the Edomite of the Bible. Right. All right? And, and the people that the Most High God hates and, 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 and the devil that the Bible speaks of. Okay? Come out here week in and week out to prophesy destruction and judgment against this wicked kingdom known as Canada and America and all its contemporaries, man. Okay? All right? So all you, all you nations that have taken spoil of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are going to be spoiled very soon, thus saith the Lord, man. So give me Obadiah, the 18th or uh, the 15th verse, I believe. Okay. That is going to be Go ahead. This is Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. For the day of the Most High is near upon all the heathen. The day of the Lord, the day of the Most High God, Yahweh, is near upon all you heathens, man. It's near upon all you white people. It's near upon all you Asians, all you Arabs, all you East Indians, all you damn Filipinos. The day of the Lord is near upon all of you, man. And what is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord equates to two things, man. The, 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 the deliverance and the salvation and the redemption of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Who are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of? And the destruction and the slavery and the judgment of you damn heathens, man. That's right. Okay? Every single last one of you heathens, man. That's what the day of the Lord is dealing with, man. Go ahead. It's for the day of the Most High is near upon all the heathens. Uh huh. As thou hast done, Read. it shall be done unto thee. As thou hast done. What has thou done? You white people have put black people in slavery, man. That's right. 400 years of slavery. You white people genocided and stole the land of the Native Americans. That's right. Okay? You white people took the land and put borders on the land of the so-called Latinos, man. That's right. Took their nationality away from them. Took their culture away from them. Took their identity away from them, man. That's what you so-called white people have done. So read that again. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. That means slavery for white people, man. Right. That means genocide for white people. Right. That's judgment. That's righteous judgment. That's called something you so-called white people like to call karma. That's right. What, what goes around comes around. So what you've done to people is going to come back to you, man. Right. Okay? You took our babies and, and, and sold them away into slavery. Your babies are going to be taken and sold into slavery, man. Right. And that's called righteous judgment. Read on. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Uh-huh. For ye, as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. Read. So shall all the heathen drink continue. Guess what, man? You heathens... You, especially you so-called white people, have drunk and got fat off the blood, sweat, and tears of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. So guess what, man? You're going to drink that same cup, that same cup of slavery, that same cup of wrath, that same cup of genocide. You are going to drink of that cup, man. That's right. That cup is coming to you. Matter of fact, you're going to get a double cup. Give me that. What is that? Revelation 18? Give me that. Give me the double cup. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. Re Reward. Go ahead. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And that's what's happened. That's why the day of the Lord is near, like it's written over Dyer. Because you, the Most High is up to here. 
with the things that you so-called white people have done, man. Right. On the earth. All the wickedness, all the murder, all the bloodshed that you white people have done on the earth, the Lord is up to here with it, man. Right. So his day, your day is coming. His day is coming. Where he's going to render judgment on all you so-called white people and all you other nations that benefit off of all these things that white people have done, man. Read. And the Most High hath remembered her iniquity. The Most High is, is remembering all of the wicked things that you've done. Every single one of them, man. Not one of them is hid from the eyes of the Most High God. Every single thing you white people have done to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, he's going to remember it, man. Right. Go ahead. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Read. And double unto her double according to her work. So the Most High God said reward these white people, reward these heathens, these East Indians, these Arabs, reward them as they have rewarded you. Not only that, reward them double, man. Right. So guess what, black man? Your people were in slavery for four, over 400 years. So what does that mean? That means the white man needs a thousand years of slavery, man. That's right. That means these heathens, these East Indians, these Arabs, these Asians, all these heathens that benefited off the slavery of your people, they're going to get a thousand years of slavery. Right. Right? And a so-called white man who genocided hundreds of millions of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, Damn near to the point of extinction? What, what is the double of being exterminated damn near to the point of extinction? That means the white man is going to be eliminated off of the face of the earth, man. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Read on. Is that you on that? In the cup which he hath filled, filled to her, double. Right. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to get double. You're going to get double slavery. You're going to get double genocide, which is going to equate to your extermination. Right. Okay? For all the things that you've done. All right? So give me that in Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. Uh huh. The portion of Jacob is not like them. Read. For he is the former of all things. Our God is the former of all things. Our God is not like the God of these heathens, man. Why? Because our God is the creator of heaven and earth. Right. The true living power on the earth, man. That damn elephant with a hundred arms is not a real living power, man. These damn East Indians made that themselves. Okay, and all the other madness that they worship, man. Right? Oh. Alright? This 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 animal, whose real name is Caesar Bourget, is not a god. Okay, he is a creation, he is not created. That rock over there in Mecca is not a god. Okay? Allah! That is not a god. That is a that is a man-made deity which really represents the moon. Right which is not a God. It is a creation of the Most High God. Our God is the former of all things. Our God formed elephants, man. Our God formed rocks. Our God formed uh, 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 the moon. That's our God. Right. Okay? Read. Go. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. And Israel is the rod of the inheritance of the creator of heaven and earth. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the inheritance of the creator of the whole earth, man. The creator of the universe. Right. You are his inheritance. Read on. 
So, the, the, the power of host is his name. Uh huh? So are my battle axe and weapons of war. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the weapons and the battle axe of the Most High God. Read on. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation. Guess what? The Most High is going to use you black Hispanics and Native Americans. Those of you that take heed, those of you that hearken unto his word, he's going to use you to break in pieces the goddamn white man, the devil. That's right. Okay? He's going to use you to break in pieces these damn East Indians in Brampton, man. That's right. He's going to use you to break in pieces the damn Arabs in Mississauga, man. Okay? And the damn gooks in Scarborough. He's going to use you to break these people in pieces, man. You understand? Keep going. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation. Uh huh. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. These ki this kingdom Canada is going to be destroyed, man. All right? Every kingdom is going to be destroyed when the Most High God sets up his kingdom under, yeah, under, under him, ruled over by Yahweh Shai, man. That's right. Under the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay? All these nations are going to fall. What does it say? It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, man. All these other nations, they're, they're not doing the will of the Most High God, man. All these other nations are succumbing to the, to the, to the, to the fornication, to the wine of Babylon, man, which wow. is America. And allowing homosexuality, allowing transgenderism, allowing all manner of wickedness to go on. That's why all these heathens move here, man. All these heathens move here because in their countries, for example, in Arabia or in India, you got people in order, you got them in so somewhat in order. We got nations where there's no homosexuality allowed. That's right. There's nations where women are supposed to dress modestly. And you got these people fleeing from those nations to come here. Why? Because this place allows you to do whatever the hell you want, man. Bring it out. In this place, you can be a homosexual. In this place, you can, you can tell your child, your son, that he can be a little girl. That's right. Because this place is the house of Satan, man. Right. And guess what? This place is going to be destroyed, man. Bring it out. Because of the wickedness that it promotes, it's going to be destroyed. Right. And the Lord is going to use blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to destroy this place, man. And he's using it right now. Right now, we're seriously taking this place down, man. By breaking down the stronghold. All right? Is that it on that? Give me Revelations. Give me Revelation uh, 21. No, no, 2 and 26. Okay? Those, those of our people that can see through, 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 through the lies of Canada, that can see that everything Canada promotes is wicked, everything that America promotes is wicked, the Lord is going to raise those, mans up, those men up to destroy this place, man. All right, read what you got. It's a revelation, chapter 2, verse 26. Uh-huh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my work. And he that overcometh. If you overcome the lies and the temptation and the wickedness of Canada and, and keep the works of who the world calls Christ, real name Yahweh Shem Mashiach, a black man, read. Unto him will I give power over the nations. He's going to give you power over the nations, man. Where's equality in that, man? Right. I want a Christian to tell me, where is the equality and, and, and who the world calls Christ? Where's the love and the equality? And Him giving power over the nations, man, to those that endure, to those that do His work. Right. Where's the love and the equality in that? There's no such thing as equality, man. There's no such thing. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are far better than all you other nations, man. That's right. The Israelites are far better than all you other nations, man. You other nations are nothing. You're spittle. Right. You're a drop of a bucket. You are nothing compared to God's chosen people, man. That's right. So where's the equality in that? Where's the equality in the Lord and who the world calls Christ? Giving his people slaves, man. That's the madness you learn in the Christian church. Keep reading. Verse, verse 27. Uh huh. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. See, he's not going to rule them nicely. You know, do whatever you want. You want to be a homosexual, go ahead and be a homosexual. You want to tell your son he can be a little girl and put on a dress. Go ahead, do whatever you feel like. No. Christ is going to give the kingdom of heaven 
to men that are gonna rule over it with a rod of iron, man. Right. You go off, you're getting smashed, man. Broken into pieces, like the Bible says, man. Read on. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Uh huh. As the vessels of a potter, uh huh. Shall they be broken to shivers? And guess what? You heathens are gonna rebel, man. And you're gonna be broken into pieces. And you're going into slavery. That's right. Under blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you will be a slave. Uh. And those of you that rebel will be broken into pieces by the rod of iron, bro. Drop that. Get, a, uh, get Revelation 13 and 10. All right? You got the Christian and Catholic Church talking about saints, a bunch of decrepit old ass white devils that probably molest the children, man. Uh. Don't got a damn thing to do with the saints, man. Okay? You don't know anything about the saints if you're up in the Christian and Catholic Church. If you're up, if you're a Jehovah Witness, you don't know a damn thing about no saint, man. Up here, we 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 are praying and hoping we are of the elect and of the sainthood, man. Right. All right. That's why we come out here and do what we do. That's why we have the patience and the faith that we have, man. Which the brothers about to read. Go ahead. It's a Revelation chapter thirty, verse 10. thirteen. Thirteen. Verse 10. Just call it out again, Salaki. This is a revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. Okay? You so called white people led black people, you led Hispanic people, and you led, led Native American people into captivity. That's right. You put chains on our necks, you took our children away from us. You forced them to work, forced us to work. You led a nation of people into captivity, okay? Not only that, you didn't just lead any old nation into captivity. You led the children of God into captivity. That's right. You led the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, the chosen people of the Most High God, the inheritance of the people, the inheritance of the Most High God, like we just read. You led them into slavery, man. Huh? So read. He that leadeth into captivity uh -huh. shall go into captivity. And this is what we brought out earlier, man. That which you have done, shall re you shall be rewarded therewith, man. That's right. And you so-called white people, like I said, you like like history says. Never mind what I say. Your own history books condemn you, man. What does the scripture say? His own mouth condemns him, man. That's right. You white people condemn yourselves. Right. Got it all up in your history books, how you took this nation, genocided the people, enslaved the people, and when there weren't enough slaves to go around, you went into the, into the west coast of Africa and took the Jews, man. And you told them that they were Africans. When they're the Jews, the chosen people of God, man. They're not Negroes. They're not black people. They're not Africans, man. They're the chosen people of God, the Jews that the Bible speaks of. Right. All right? And the people you stole this land from are not damn Indians, man. They're not natives. They're none of these things. They're the children of Israel that the Bible speaks of. That's right. And that's who you so-called white people took into captivity. That's why you white people got to go into captivity, man. Right. That's why black people have to take you as slaves. Read. He that killeth with the sword. And this is what you did to the native brothers, man. And the Hispanic, so-called Hispanic and Latino brothers, man. You came over here and you slaughtered the Taino Indians. You slaughtered the Arawak Indians. You came over here and you slaughtered the Aztecs. You slaughtered the Iroquois. You slaughtered the, 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 the Blackfoot. All right? You slaughtered all these people. And you so-called white people think nothing's going to happen to you after all the bloodshed you've done? Right. Shalom, man. It's good. Shalom. You finish that up. He that killed with the sword uh -huh. must be killed with the sword. So you so-called white people got to die, man. You so-called white. And the Lord said you're going to get a double portion of that cup. God. You damn near exterminated Native Americans. So guess what? You are going to be exterminated, every single last one of you, man. God. Thus saith the Lord. Read on. Here is the patience and the faith 
of the saints. And this is what I mean when no Catholic or no Christian church understands what a saint is, man. That's right. Because the saints are waiting for people to go into slavery, man. That's right. The saints are waiting for the white man who took people into captivity to go into slavery. That's right. For what he did. Where the, the, the saints are waiting patiently for white people to be genocided the same way they genocided millions of Native Americans and, and, and Latinos, man. That's right. The saints are waiting for white people to go into slavery the same way they, they inflicted slavery on an entire nation of people that they call the Negro, which the Bible calls the Jews, man. That's right. Okay? That's what a true saint is waiting for. Those damn white decrepit devils all up on the, the Catholic Church's walls, those are not saints, man. Alright. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. So drop that, give me, give me Psalm 148 and 14. This is Psalm, chapter 148. And 14, uh -huh. he also exalted the horn of his people. Read. The praise of all his saints. His saints, go ahead. Even of the children of Israel. So that's who the saints are, man. The saints can't be some damn Polish white devil. The, the saints can't be some damn Italian devil child molester, man. Right. The saints are of the house of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the saints, man. Right. Give me one. Give me Psalm 149. Start at six. This is Psalm 149, verse six. Huh? Let the high, let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth. So the high praises are going to be in the mouths of the saints. Go ahead. And the two-edged sword in their hand. They're going to have a two-edged sword in their hand. Go ahead. To execute vengeance. What? To execute vengeance. To execute vengeance, man. What is vengeance? That's revenge. The, that's why. That's why they're pa patiently and faithfully waiting for the slavery and the genocide. It's not for no reason, man. Right. Vengeance is, is because somebody did something to you, so you're gonna take vengeance upon them. You so-called white people did something to us, man. You did something to our people. You took our people into slavery. You took our land. You sold our children. You did something to us. Therefore, we got to take vengeance on you, man. That's right. And it's ordained by the Most High God. Right. Read. To execute vengeance uh -huh. upon the heathen. Upon who? Upon the heathen. Guess what, man? If you are not of the house of Israel, if you're not a black, Hispanic, or Native American, the Lord sees you as a heathen, man. That's right. And vengeance is going to be taken upon you, heathen, especially you so-called white people, man. That's right. Because you have done the most disgusting and, and, and just vile things to God's people out of all the heathen. That's right. All right? 400 years, 400 plus years of slavery. The theft of the land of the Native Americans. The genocide of the Native Americans. All of these things have been counted against you, man. So vengeance is going to be taken upon you. That's right. Read. And punishment of the, upon the people. Uh-huh. To bind their kings with chains. Guess what, man? Donald Trump is going to be on a goddamn dog leash in the kingdom. Man. That's right. Okay? Hillary Clinton is also going to be on a dog leash in the kingdom. Right. Prince Charles... And Princess Elizabeth, all these, all these damn devils are gonna be on dog leashes in a dog house in the kingdom of, of heaven, man. That's right. Okay, read. And their nobles with fetters of iron. Read. To execute upon them uh -huh. the judgment. Read. Written. The judgment has already been written against you so-called white people, against you so-called East Indians, against you so-called Africans. All you people that have taken a hand in the slavery of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans and have benefited thereof, the judgment has already been written against you, man. That's right. We didn't write this book, man. We're not but 40 years old, combined, our, our ages combined. This book was written thousands of years ago, man. And thousands of years ago, it was predicted, it was prophesied that you damn devils and you heathens would do this to our people. Right. And thousands of years ago, it was written that you would be judged for it, man. That's right. Okay? 
and you're not the first uh, empire to do it, man. The Egyptians did it, and they got destroyed. The Babylonians did it, and they got destroyed. The Assyrians did it, they got destroyed. The Romans did it, they got destroyed. So what the hell makes you think you're exempt, man? That's right. You goddamn white people are so damn proud. That's why it's going to be so great when the Most High destroys you, man. Bring it out. That's why it's going to be so unbelievable. That's why the saints are going to be jumping on their beds, rejoicing, to see you goddamn devils put into slavery, man. Right. Read. To execute upon them the judgment written, uh -huh. this honor have all his saints. Guess what, man? Not one of those white, decrepit, child molesting devils on the, on the walls of the Catholic Church did any of these things, man. Or, or probably even wanted any of these things. All they wanted to do was molest little boys, man. Right. Okay? Up here we want the slavery of white people, man. Right. Up here we want Donald Trump in a damn dog leash, man. Right. Up here we want, we want the leaders of these Arabs, we want the leaders of these East Indians, we want them as footstools, man, right. where they belong. Right. That's what we want up here. Okay? Praise ye your help. Khan, pray all praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So give me give me Psalms 2 and 8. So the Most High God says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, man. Read on. For thine inheritance. That is your inheritance, black man, Hispanic man. Right. These heathens. These heathens that rule over you, they're supposed to be your inheritance, man. Right. You're supposed to tell them to hurry the hell up and work faster. That's right. You're supposed to tell them that they're not that, that they're fired. You're supposed to tell them that they're not going to be able to feed their children, man. Cut. But you what? You'd rather follow after them than follow after the Most High God, man. So guess what? They rule over you. Cut. You are their inheritance. That's why it's so imperative that our people come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, and faith in His in, 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 who, in His only begotten Son, which He appointed King over you, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. Yeah, how was Shia Mashiach? All right. Not no goddamn white devil, man. Okay. Let me. Ezekiel three and nine, thir uh, thirty-nine and nine. All right. Chapter 39, verse 9. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel uh -huh. shall go forth. Read. And shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Go ahead. Both the shield and the bucklers, uh -huh. the bows and the arrows, uh -huh. and the hand steeds and the spear. Go ahead. And they shall burn them with fire seven years. Keep reading. So that they shall take no wood out of the field. Go ahead. Neither cut down any out of the forest. Read. For they shall burn the weapons with fire. Go ahead. And they shall spoil those that spoil them. This is the point, man. Because this is what's coming. This is dealing with the day of the Lord. When those people who were spoiled and robbed and destroyed are going to take vengeance on those who did that to them. Right. Okay? Native Americans are going to rob and spoil you so-called white people, man. That's right. Negroes are going to rob and spoil you so-called white people. That's right. For what you've done to them. Hispanics and Native and Latinos are going to tell you that you're the illegal immigrant. That's right. And separate you from your children. Right. Okay? Got that. Get Jeremiah 30 and 16.
Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. All they that devour thee. The thee is talking about Israel. The children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It said all they. All. Up here, we get on the white man a lot, but you East Indians, you're gonna catch it too, man. That's right. You Asians. Because guess what? The white man devoured the Native Americans and, and so called Negroes and Latinos to build this God forsaken place up. And then come you damn what they call immigrants. You East Indians are the real illegal immigrants, man. That's right. Okay? Talking about a Mexican's an illegal immigrant. A Mexican was here before the white man even coined the phrase illegal immigrant, man. That's right. But you want to call a Mexican an illegal immigrant. You East Indians are the illegal immigrants, man. That's right. Okay? You goddamn Asians are illegal immigrants. You goddamn Arabs are illegal immigrants, man. And you goddamn devil, disgusting, filthy white people are the most illegal immigrant on the face of the earth, man. That's right. You try to go into every place on the earth and act like it's yours. You are the true illegal immigrant, you goddamn filthy white people, man. That's right. All right? Three. And all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Captivity is coming. For you goddamn filthy heathens, man. Right. It's coming. The day of the Lord is near, man. So get ready. Get ready for slavery. Keep reading. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And the same way you spoiled us, we're gonna spoil you, man. All that rich, all those riches, all that gold, all that, all those diamonds, all the land, all the resources is gonna belong to the Black, Hispanic, and Native American, man. Huh? And nothing is gonna belong to you anymore. Not even your own self. Not even your own children, man. Huh? Because you are going into captivity. Thus saith the Lord, man. Right. You want that? And all they that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. Right. Because you so-called, you heathens, man. You pray on the black, Hispanic, and Native American. All right? Especially you so-called white people. Right. Driving around in your cop cars. <coughs> Salakia. Driving around in your cop cars. Trying to find a way to trap a damn a, a, a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American. Trying to find a way you can catch them flipping, right. so you can put them in a cage. When you white people deserve to be in a cage, man. That's right. Okay. So drop that. Isaiah 24 and 21. Oh, Lord, black man, black man. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 21 uh -huh. and it shall come to pass in that day that the most high shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth guess what man judgment is coming to these nations and judgment is coming to their armies man the most high is about to put the spirit on the armies of the earth to make war with one another man huh. give me that in Joel was that three is that three all right, that's what's coming, man. Understand this, you Canadians, you Canadians think you have it made in Canada, man. Understand this one thing, man. War is coming to Canada, man. That's right. World War Three is right around the corner, and every world war Canada has been involved. Guess what? The Third World War is no exception. Canada will be involved in the Third World War. Right. And your sons and your daughters that serve in this military are going to die. Right. And those of you that do not repent from this wicked place and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, you're going to die when the Lord puts His Spirit on these other nations to, to bombard it with nuclear missiles, man. Right. Because North Korea is going to aim its missiles at, at, at Canada, man. China already has missiles aimed at, at Canada. All right? For taking that woman, man, that Huawei CEO. 
you already, Canadians are already in the crosshairs of China, man. And they're gonna get ready to, to, to lay siege on Canada, man. Via nuclear missiles. That's right. All right? And, and, and the contemporaries of China are gonna do the same, man. You got the BRIC alliance. Brazil, Russia, India, and China, which also has other smaller allies like North Korea, Iran. All these nations are becoming confederate against Canada and America and NATO and the EU, man. Right. And it's gonna get to the point where Canada's gonna have to make a decision, man. And it's gonna be a hard decision because you're basically a part of the state, man. There's parts of America that are, that are, that are north from here. Right? So when America gets bombarded with the missiles, you're gonna get bombarded with missiles as well. Huh? So get the what's the what's up? Go ahead. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. And this is what we're doing out here, man. Fine. Okay? We're out here first and foremost, and mainly to wake up the children of Israel, the elect of Israel, matter of fact. That's right. And the one third. Okay? And to wash our hands of the blood of the rest of the nation. Okay? But we're also out here to prophesy against many nations and kingdoms. That's right. Jer what is that? Jeremiah 28 and 8, right? The Lord has sent us out here to proclaim your judgment against you, you nations, man. That's right. So read that. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Uh-huh. Prepare war. That's what we're out here to proclaim among you Gentiles, man. Pro prepare war. Prepare to go to war with one another, man. That's right. Because peace has never existed on this earth, man. Uh -huh. Okay? You've always been going to war. It's nothing new. But this war that's coming, everybody knows these world wars take an especially huge death toll on the earth. So prepare war, man. Because I want to see a lot of you heathens die. That's right. Okay? Read. Wake up the mighty men. Uh-huh. Let all the men of war draw near. All the men of war are going to draw near. Russia, India, China, Brazil, Iran, North Korea. All of these men are going to draw near. And they're going to come together to war against America. To war against Canada. Read. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. Uh-huh. And your pruning hooks into spears. And that's, they're going to make the, they're going to make themselves weapons of mass destruction, which we already see coming to pass. Man. It's no news that Iran has a, has, uh, is making weapons. It's no news that Russia and China has weapons, man. Right. Of mass destruction, nuclear missiles, ICBM. Right. All right, it came out not too long ago that Russia has an unstoppable missile, man. Hypersonic missile, man. Right. Aimed right at America. And China right now has this, their missiles aimed at you Canadians, man. Right. So wake up, you Chinese. Wake up, you Russians. Wake up, you Indians, man, and get ready to make war with this goddamn devil, the white man. That's right. Read. Let them come up, Salaki. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Uh -huh. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. And gather yourselves together round the belt. Uh huh. Thither does thy mighty ones cause thy mighty ones to come down or your house. Read. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Right, man. That's what's happening right now. The heathens are being awakened, man. The heathens have been in a, in a deep sleep thinking that the white man is the maximum power on the earth. That's right. And they're coming to the realization that they can overthrow this devil, man. That's right. That this white man isn't isn't a damn thing, man. That's right. That he's a low, vile weakling. That's right. And that they can come together and overthrow him, man. 
and destroy his nation. They're waking up to this fact. And they're going to destroy this place with nuclear missiles, man. That's right. And we will be singing all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai when it happens. So drop what you got. All right. Give me Isaiah 16 and 10. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 10. Uh-huh. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. So the strangers, man. The strangers is talking about those people that are not your people. Right. And the in the die is dealing with the children of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The strangers, the heathen, are gonna build up your walls. I know that sounds like a strange and far-fetched thing. But that's the kingdom of heaven, man. When these heathens are going to be under your subjection, these heathens are going to be your employees, man, without pay, might I add. That's right. And they're going to build up your walls. Go ahead. And the king shall minister unto thee. Uh-huh. For in my wrath I smote thee. Read. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Right, and that's who the mercy is for. The mercy is for the children of Israel. The mercy is for the people who, who need mercy, man. That's right. White people don't need mercy, man. People need mercy from white people. That's right. Okay? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are in dire need of mercy, man. That's right. Nobody is in more, more, more need of mercy than blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You can't find the people more in need of mercy. Especially from the devil, the white man. Okay? Read on. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Uh -huh. They shall not be shut day nor night. Read. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. All the forces, all your riches, all your resources are going to belong to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. This is the kingdom of heaven, man. The kingdom of heaven is you heathens, you white people, being on the bottom. And blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans finally taking their true spot at the top of the earth. That's right. Under Yahweh, under Yahweh Shai. That's a lot here. Under Yahweh Shai, he's under Yahweh. That's a lot. That's right. Okay. We done? And that the kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. So the, the nation and the kingdom that will not serve the Most High God, that will not serve his people, that will not build up their walls, that will not bring their riches and their resources to the children of God, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, so-called, the nations that will not do that, go ahead. The, na the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. You shall perish, man. Right. The Most High will destroy you. Going back to the, going back to the revelations, revelation where it says uh, they, they shall be broken into pieces, man. Huh? by the rod of iron by the battle axe and the weapon of war of the most high God which is the children of Israel blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans okay Ready on that yeah those nations shall be utterly wasted utterly wasted man you other nations are going to be completely and utterly destroyed man the same way blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans are today if not worse man right if not worse we're at the peak of, of colonialism when we were in complete slavery with yokes of iron on our neck, that's the subjug subjugation you are going to be in, in the kingdom of heaven. You white people, man. You East Indians and you, and you Asians and all you other heathens, man. Okay? So drop that. Give me a second. Or right, move that one. Man. All right, second Ezra 13 and 10. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 13 verse 10. Uh -huh. But only I saw 
that he had sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire uh -huh. and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest this is talking about the, the, the final battle man the final battle of armageddon okay and it's talking about how the most high and, 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 and Yahweh Shai and the angels and the chariots are going to blast out fire against whatever armies are left after the battle, after the, the, the world war. Whatever armies are left, they're going to have to fight up against Yahweh Shai and the angels. Man. And it's not going to be, a, it's not gonna be a, 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 a fair fight. Let me tell you that from now. Go ahead. Verse 11. And they were all mixed together. Uh -huh. The blast of fire the flaming breath, and the great tempest. Go ahead. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. They were prepared to fight. They weren't even fighting yet, man. That's what's going to happen. You, you, you heathens are going to gather your armies up, feeling yourselves, feeling like you're so great and powerful. Why? Because you just got done destroying America and Canada. Right. So you're going to be feeling yourself. Feeling yourself to the point where you think you can fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. That's right. That's the pride of you goddamn demons, man. And you're gonna prepare for war. Before you can even even think about attacking, you're gonna get utterly destroyed, man. You know? And so with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. Uh-huh. And burned them up, every one. Every single one, man. Every like, like we read, those who do not want to serve are going to be destroyed and perish, man. That's right. Every single one of you. Go ahead. So that. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. That's what's going to be left. Of all of these armies, of all these nations that are left, that survive, there's only going to be left dust and smoke, man. Right. Okay? Give me Matthew 10 and 34, man. Because that's what, that's what Christ is going to come back and do. Or no, give me... Um, and then Matthew 10 and 34. Because people got a people got a misconception about who the world calls Christ. They think who the world calls Christ is gonna come with flowers and rainbows and love for everyone to hold everybody's hand. Who the world calls Christ is not coming for any of that. Man. Understand that? Not for you heathens, anyway. Not for you wicked Negroes and Hispanics and Native Americans. That's not what it's coming with, man. Read. This is Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. Read. And I saw heaven open. Go ahead. And behold a white horse. A white horse. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And that's who that's, that's who the world calls Christ. All right. Called faithful and true. Read. And in righteousness. In, in righteousness, man. Okay. Because you guys up here thinking we're talking about race. We're racist, which we are. But we're racist in righteousness. That's right. The white man is racist in, 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 in lies and deceit, man. That's right. Because guess what? White supremacy is a lie and a fairy tale. Like Santa Claus, like, 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 like the Tooth Fairy, like the Leprechaun. That's what white supremacy is. It's a damn fairy tale and it's a lie. And it doesn't exist. That's right. There's nothing superior about a white man. That's right. There's nothing superior about blonde hair and blue eyes and, blonde, and, and, and white skin, man. That's right. Dealing scientifically, all those things are recessive genes. There's nothing superior about a white man. Okay? And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. That's what I said. In righteousness, he's going to come and judge. And in righteousness, he's going to make war, man. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The war is coming soon. So, So-called white people didn't judge or, 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 or make war in righteousness, man. They, they made war in greed, man. In greediness, that's what they made war in. But the most, but who the world calls Christ is coming to make war in righteousness, man. Read. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Read it again for yourself. 
It's a revelation, chapter 19 and 11. Uh huh. And I saw heaven open. Read. And behold, a white horse. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. He was called faithful and true. Who do I call Christ? Go ahead. And in righteousness. In righteousness, read. He doth judge and make war. He's going to judge and make war. He's not coming back with flowers and rainbows to sing Kumbaya with you so called white people, man. He's coming back to judge you. He's coming back to make war with you, man. Right. And the rest of you heathens that will have the audacity to stand up against him. Right. So give me Matthew 10 and 34. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Uh huh. Think not that I am called to send peace on earth. Who the world calls Christ, right? This man that they portray to be some loving, caring hippie who loves everybody, said he did not come to bring peace on earth, man. Read. I came, so look. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Uh huh. I came not to send peace. Read. But a sword. But a what? But a sword. But a what? But a sword. Who the world calls Christ came to bring a sword to the earth, man. That's right. Okay. Let me look 12 and 51. So where's the love in that, man? How do you show love when you say out of your own mouth, you're not coming to bring peace, but you're coming to bring a, a sword, man, and come and judge and make war? Because who the world calls Christ is not some fun-loving hippie, man. Who the world calls Christ is the only true black so-called black revolutionary, man. Right. And he's gonna come back to, to 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 finish off the revolution, man, of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Read. Revelation, Luke chapter twelve, verse fifty-one. Go ahead. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Again, this is something that that all these people suppose. They don't actually go into the book and figure it out for themselves. They just suppose. Why? Because the white man said it, man. That's right. Guess what? The white man is the goddamn devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. All right? So you shouldn't believe a damn thing he says. Okay? So don't suppose. Read the book for yourself and find out. Read. I tell you nay, but rather division. Nay. He's coming to divide, man. And that's the thing. You people think that he's going to come and unify everybody and everybody's going to love each other and everybody's just going to have a good old time, man. Who the world calls Christ is coming with a sword to oh. judge and to make war. Oh. War against you white people, man. War against all you... War and judge you homosexuals, man. You child molesters and you pedophiles. War and judge you you, you, you drug dealers, you, 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 you pimps. He's going to come judge all of you, man. All right? And guess what? He's going to also use his men, his elect, to judge you, man. All right? Give me, give me, um, Salah, give me 1 Corinthians 2.15. There's another misconception that people got that we hear a lot up here. Who are you to judge? Only God can judge me. People quote that thing like it's, people quote that like it's, like it's scripture. That's a damn Tupac lyric, man. You don't find that in the Bible anywhere. You don't find it in the Bible, only God can judge you, man. That is a Tupac lyric. And where the hell is Tupac now, man? Right. Dead. But you wanna, you wanna quote Tupac. But let us quote the Bible and you cast us out as evil. Right. You cast us out as wicked. But you'll quote Tupac all day, don't only God can judge me. Guess what, that's not what the Bible says. Read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Read. But he that is spiritual. He that is spiritual. Read. Judgeth all things. Judgeth all things. So now how do we gauge who is spiritual? Get 1 Corinthians 62. How do we gauge who's spiritual? Who has the right given by God according to his word to judge all things? But the Bible just said, he who is spiritual judges all things. So who's spiritual? Can you just say I'm spiritual? That makes you spiritual? Absolutely not. 
Not according to the word of God. You got that? First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Go ahead. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Salah. You know where it says the law is going to Right? And the saints, it's the, the Bible just said that the saints are going to judge the world. And we read earlier that the saints are patiently and faithfully waiting for those who led people into captivity to go into captivity. Right. They're pat patiently and faithfully waiting for those who killed with the sword to be killed with the sword. That's what the saints are waiting for. Read. This is Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Uh-huh. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So the Bible said th that um, he who is spiritual judges all things. The Bible said that the, the law is spiritual. So those who are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, those are spiritual men. That's right. And they will judge all things. All right? That's it on that? But I am carnal, sold under sin. Carnal. Give me Psalm 149 and 5. I already got that. Give me Ezekiel. Did we get Jeremiah 51? Yeah, we did, right? Give me Ezekiel 25 and 13. Alright, because that's BS. And, and once again, that is not scripture. That is a Tupac lyric. Stop acting like you're quoting the Bible when you say only God can judge. Okay? Is this is Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 13. Uh -huh. Therefore thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, uh -huh. I will also stretch out my hand upon Edo. Upon who? Upon Edo. The Most High God said he is going to stretch his hand upon Edom. The nation of Edom today is known as Caucasians. Right. Known as Europeans, known as white people. That's who the world calls Edom today. So the Lord is going to stretch his hand upon white people. Read. And will cut off man and beast from it. The Most High is going to cut off man and beast from white people. Right? Read on. And I will make it desolate from Timon. And it's going to be desolate. Go ahead. And they of the dead shall fall by the sword. Read. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. The Lord is going to lay his vengeance upon all so-called white people. Read. By the hand of my people, Israel. He's not going to come down off his throne, man. And come onto the earth. That's right. And judge white people, man. He's going to use his people, his battle axe, his weapons of war, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, to render his judgment against the so-called white man, who is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. Let it on that. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger uh -huh. and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Most High. And that's the thing, man. People ask us, why are we so angry? What's wrong with us? Why are we yelling? Why are we so angry? Our anger is, 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 is the same as the anger of the Lord, man. That's right. Because he, yeah, give me a, he's got a few seconds. Because he sees the oppression of his people, and it makes him angry. And if you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have even a shred of wisdom within you, you would get to the oppression of your people and it would make you angry. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Uh-huh. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So if you're out here in Canada enjoying life, happy as can be, you are void of wisdom, man. That's right. Because guess what? Canada oppresses your people, man. Canada oppresses so-called Negroes, Canada oppresses um, Hispanics, and Canada most definitely oppresses Native Americans. Right? That's right. So if you're up in this country as a Negro, Latino, or Native American, enjoying it, loving it, and not angry about the things that are being done to your people, you are completely void of wisdom. Okay? Read. Read again from the top, Slug. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7 uh -huh. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart And a gift destroyeth the heart And that's the problem with you so called Negroes and Latinos man You get a little job 
You get yourself a little, a little house, a little apartment, a little car, and you think you made it in Canada, man. The, the, the so-called white man gives you these little things and it destroys your heart. And you blind yourself from the wickedness that goes on. Great. Give me a, give me a moment, give me a moment, man. What is that, two? I want to say it's two. That's it, it's two. chapter 2 verse 11 uh -huh. and it came to pass in those days read when Moses was grown read that he went out of his brethren and looked on the on their burden so like you start that again Exodus chapter 2 verse 11 uh -huh. and it came to pass in those days read when Moses was grown uh -huh. that he went out unto his brethren so Moses right Moses was taken in by the Egyptian the house of royalty in Egypt right and when he grew up he went out, out from among the palace, out from among the rich people, right? Read. And looked on their burden. And he went to see his people, and he saw the burden that, were, that his people were under, man. The oppression that his people were under. Read. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew. Sister, what is, what is the, the relationship between the Egyptians and the Hebrews? The relationship between the Egyptian and the Hebrew is slave master and slave. So what Moses saw was a slave master beating a slave. Right? Read. One of his brethren. One of his brethren. His brethren were the slaves. But guess what? He was he was considered to be an Egyptian. So he was in a high place of stature. He was royalty in Egypt. But you have a lot of that happening in this in this modern day Egypt. You got a lot of Negroes and Latinos being oppressed and being murdered by the police. But then you got these Negroes and Latinos in high places and a lot of them act like nothing's going on. A lot of them act like everything's okay. Why? Because they got a mess. Why? Because they got a 401k. Why? Because they're driving around in a Bentley. Yeah. So they act like they, they act like everything's all right. Moses didn't, Moses didn't do that though. You know? And he looked this way and that way Read. And when he saw that there was no man, uh -huh. he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So we're not out here telling anybody to kill anybody, right? But just to show that the spirit that Moses was in. Even though he was rich, even though he was well off, he could tell what was going on was wrong. And had to do something about it. Did he go about it the right way? Of course not. Right? We're not condoning violence against anybody. And that's how you know, he knew what he did was wrong. Why? Because he, it says he looked this way and he looked that way, knowing that it was wrong for him to do what he was about to do, right? But read on. And when and when he went out the second day, uh -huh. behold, two men of the Hebrews, two men of the Hebrews, right? Read. Strove together. They strove together, right? So now these are two slaves striving together. This is another thing that we see in the society, and we we call it today we call it black on black crime. Right? Hispanic on black crime, Hispanic on Hispanic crime. This is what we call this today. Read? This and, is also what Moses saw. Go ahead. And he said to him that did the wrong, uh -huh. wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? So why are you why are you guys um, trying to kill each other? We are we are here, we ask you you, you Negroes and Latinos this every every week. Why are you out here killing each other when you are both under the same oppression, right? That's right. You both have the same enemy. You both are, are suffering in the same uh, captivity. So why are you uh, uh, why are you hurting each other? Why are you selling drugs to each other? Why are you gangbanging on each other? Why are you pimping out each other's daughters and sisters and wives? Why are you doing this? And what is the response that we get? Go ahead. Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? That's what they say. Like I just went into. Negroes and Latinos love to quote Tupac, right? And say only God can judge us. That's not nowhere in the Bible. Okay? If you give me Leviticus 19 and 17. All right, because if you love your people, you're gonna tell them, look, what you're doing is wrong, and you need to come back to the Most High God and follow His law, statutes, and commandments. This is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. According to the laws of God, which the Christian Church and the Catholic Church will never teach you the laws of God. 
According to the laws of God, you are not to hate your brother in your heart. That's right. So how do you show love to your brother? Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy name. Rebuke, read. And not suffer sin upon him. Because if you love your brother and you love your people, you're going to tell them what they're doing is wrong. That's right. The Bible says that the, that the wages of sin is death. So if you see your brother sinning, if you see your brother selling drugs, if you see your brother pimping out women, if, see, if you see your brother being wicked, you got to tell them to stop doing that. But the Christian church will never tell you that. The Christian church tells you come in the ER. The Christian church says you're washed by the blood of Jesus, which is true. But what ends up happening a lot of times is people abuse grace. Right? So give me Jude 1 and 4. Sister, have you ever heard that you're a Hebrew Israelite according to the Bible? So you know that. Okay, I'll praise you. I'll praise you for most time. Alright, so, so have you been implementing the law, statutes, and commandments in your everyday life? In your everyday walk? Try. You try, right? So what you would say that you... Well, we all fall short, right? But we got to try our best to continue in the path that we're supposed to walk. Right? So, how long have you known you're Israelite? Couple years ago. Couple years ago? That? This is Jude chapter 1 verse 4 uh -huh. For there are certain men crept in unaware Certain men crept in unaware into what? Into the church of the Most High God right? Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation uh -huh. Ungodly men Ungodly men, read Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness They turned the grace of the, of, of, of the, the Most High gave us Which the grace is who the world calls Christ Coming and dying for our sins Right, so they take that, that, that grace him dying for our sins and they turn it to lascivious. They turn it into something wicked and evil and, and basically say that we have a, a, a license to sin now. Give me um, Romans, what is that, 6 and 1? Romans 6 and 1. The Most High did not give nobody no license to sin. He gave you, you Negroes and Latinos, He gave you guys a second chance. That's what He gave you guys. You got any questions, sister? Listening? So Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? Read. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? Read. That grace may be abound. That grace may abound. Go. God forbid. God forbids that, man. You can't continue sinning because, because who the world calls Christ died for your sins. You're supposed to stop sinning. What did he tell the woman? The woman that almost got stoned for adultery. He told everybody who he was without sin cast the first stone. Everybody dropped their stones and left, right? Then what did he say to the woman? He said, go ye and sin no more. So, what is, so where in the Bible, where is it that you get this idea that now you're allowed to just break the laws of God? Because that's what sin is. Get 1 John 3 and 4. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Do not let sin reign anymore in your mortal body. Read. That ye should obey in the lust thereof. Uh-huh. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You're not under the law, but you're under grace. So sin will not have dominion over you. Because guess what? In this, in this, in this, um, in this nation, right, in this captivity, you're not required to keep the laws of God. There's no, there's no Levit Levitical priesthood that's gonna come and put you to death because you didn't keep the Sabbath. There's no Levitical priesthood that's gonna come and put you to death because you're a homosexual, right? So you have, right now, you have grace, right? And you have liberty to keep the law or not. How much more faithful do you look when you keep the laws of God even though you don't have to keep the laws of God? That's right. Even though there's no penalty of death. Face, you're not faced with the penalty of death, but you still keep the laws of God. That's true faith. That's showing, showing true faith and true dedication to the Most High. Question. What religion is this? We're not a religion. We're, de we're dealing with... a a heritage and a culture, right? So, like I said earlier, we are the children of God. We are the, the true Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of, right? And the children of Israel were given a law and a, her and a, and a covenant with the Most High, which was to be their heritage. You got it? Right, but like, yeah. So our culture and our heritage is to keep the laws. What, what ended up happening with the Bible 
is that this book is it's called the Bible, right? When you go into the Greek word, it's a Greek word, right? Biblios, which means records. So this book is the records of the children of Israel, right? So what people what ended up happening is people took a, the records of a certain people and creating religions out of it, right? You had Catholicism, Christianity, all these various denominations that took a people's culture and heritage and made a religion out of it. You got that? This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 11. Uh -huh. Besides this, he gave them the knowledge and the law of life. The law of life, read. For inheritance. For inheritance. This is the heritage. This is our true heritage. Because in slavery, our heritage was taken away from us. And in, 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 prior to slavery, we weren't Christians. Prior to slavery, we weren't worshiping a white Jesus. Prior to, to slavery, we weren't doing, the, dressing the way we dress, acting the way we act. All of these things we were, we picked it up from the so-called white man in slavery. So what we're doing through the Spirit and the power of the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son is bringing our people back to their true heritage. So you think the white Jesus is six? What's that? The white Jesus is the image of the devil. The white Jesus is the image of the devil because the word devil goes back to the word deceiver, right? So when they make, when they take it, um, go, 924, and then get re revelations, right? Because have you ever heard that, that who the world calls Christ was really a black man, a so-called black man? There's descriptions in the Bible about his certain images of him, yeah. Right, and is it described as that? No. Absolutely that not, not, right? So what would that, what would that make this? A deception. Alright, sister, search up Hebrew intellect Sakari on YouTube. Alright, sister. Alright, drop that. Alright, with that, we're gonna give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And as always, it's death, death to Canada, Canada and death, death to America. America.